probably I make it bigger so you can see. <laughs> that we provide you, which is Cabone Winter School 13-1-2019, uh, everyone has this folder, no? So, inside this folder you find uh, Cabone Winter School uh, cringing uh, precipitation, you select it, you make it blue, otherwise it doesn't work, and then uh, you can do it, you can do open, And it will be, it will appear something like this. We need to select Cabana in the school folder. Cabana in the school one, uh, nine one, 2013, underscore creating precipitation. Make it blue and then open it. So the first. Uh, the first, uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, the first uh, scene file is the estimation of the value. Uh, from where we start? So we start from something like this. We have our uh, basin. Uh, we have some meteorological station, which are the round. <coughs> okay. Then we have our sub basins, and we already have the centroids of the sub basin, right? So the round circles are. The station, whereas the X are the uh, sub basins centroids. That would be, for example, this one, this one, this one, this one, and. Is it clear? So what you already had was the shape file of the sub of the centroid sub basin. What we add for you today is the shape file of the meteorological station. And then you have to have another thing, which is the uh, measured data. So for each station, you have a uh, a value of precipitation that it has been measured for you and it has been stored in the precipitation file. Now I show you the precipitation. Uh, Daily? Uh, Daily? Monthly? Yeah, we will look at it. I, I'm opening the, the file now for you so that you can see. And uh, if you open uh, your. Uh, like this, if you open just from an internet for uh, explorer <coughs> uh, your folder in data, uh, <coughs> in data, uh, Cavone, you can find the meteorology, the shape file of the meteorological stations that is new for you, and then you can find 
the uh, precipitation and if we open the <coughs> precipitation you can see something like this <coughs> where uh, okay now you look at Uh, okay, we will do the simulation over uh, uh, two years, more or less. And uh, so this is the there is an header in the file that we specify, uh, in which we specify who created the file, uh, what are the uh, header of the measured data, what is the type of uh, uh, data that we are going to read. Uh, the format for the date and time so you can see that are hourly data and each row is ident identified by the date so for example the first row is 1-1 one, one of 2012 at 0, zero. and uh, for each row we have the measured precipitation in each station so you can see that some station doesn't work which is the one uh, with minus 999. Some station works and, zero and just measure uh, zero precipitation value and so on. So the, the file is quite uh, auto explicative. If you have a question on the file, you can ask. So for first day, you have the how many stations? Uh, the number of station is the number of columns that you, uh, you have. It is like 760 something. <coughs> and you can see at the end of the file, or if you open with a CSV uh, reader, it is even better. So for each day, we have 60, 63. Every hour. Every hour, yes. And uh, and we will use this data for interpolate uh, the precipitation value from the station to the center. Is it clear? Yes. Then we will uh, later uh, soon tomorrow we will plot this data for you as well. Okay. So you will visualize it and see. Now we will focus on the uh, estimation of the semi-value. Yeah? So what we do for each hour, then for each 10 step, we will uh, uh, estimate an uh, experimental value. Yeah? So uh, this is done for each hour of your uh, uh, precipitation time series, uh, temperature time series, or whatever. So the first thing that we will define is the uh, start date and end date of your simulation. We already saw, uh, okay, the, the start date and the end date can be different from the files that, uh, that we uh, show, we just opened. Right? For example, the file started from 2012, but our simulation time starts from 2013, okay? so. Uh, the length of the files of the precipitation uh, is independent from the simulation time. So you can define any dates here, as far as those dates are inside the precipitation file. Uh, then uh, we need uh, what? This is the uh, summary. So we need to read the meteorological station shape file because we want to know where the points are. We need to read the data of the precipitation. So in fact, in the component, we have a reader for the data. We have a reader for the station. And then we have the experimental variogram component. And then we have uh, two writers, one for the distances and one for the, uh, for the semivariance value. If you remember, uh, the, the experimental semivariable has uh, here the semivariance value and on the x-axis you have the distances and then you decide the number of beans and for each beans you have a set of points this is more or less clear yes so 
we go down in the simulation file, and we have to define some parameters. Those parameters are quite, uh, you already have seen this. Uh, for example, we use a uh, data reader for reading uh, uh, the precipitation. So the data reader in, uh, has as input the ID, the ID field of your data, the simulation <coughs> start and end, so the, the part of precipitation that we want to read. And then the time step in minutes. In fact, here we are using 60 minutes. And what is the no value uh, of your uh, precipitation uh, file? So this depends on your standard. In my case, it was mine, nine, mine uh, nine, 999, uh, whereas you can use whatever, minus 1,000 or things. The important is that you specify it. And then we have the. Uh, the shapefile reader uh, parameters, which is uh, the path to the shapefile that you want to read. And then you have the field, the ID of each station. And finally, you have the cutoff divide, uh, which is the number of bins in which we, contain, we, we provide the semivariogram. And here, uh, you see that are just eight. So we will have eight points uh, as outputs. And then you provide uh, also as parameters the path to the output of uh, the distances and to the output of the um, semivariance. So it computes, for each time step, it computes uh, a vector of uh, uh, distances. And this vector is long as the number of bins you have selected, so we have eight column uh, vector and uh, eight column of semivariance. And then you move to the next one, to the next hour, and it does the same. And so on for all your simulation time. So your uh, final output will be a, a file like the precipitation one, the one that we opened before, in which for each hour we have eight columns, which are the eight uh, experimental uh, variants, and another file with the eight uh, distances, which is the file of the distance. Then it's up to you to decide what to do. You can use uh, a hourly based semivariogram for fitting uh, an hourly based theoretical variogram. Or you can compute just a mean of this uh, variance and distance and fit just a mean semivariogram for all, for the entire time series, and so on. Now, uh, ah, let's finish the file first. So uh, you can see uh, that the writer just provide, the writer just requires the output, the path to the output, and the time step, and also the start date of your uh, simulation uh, period. Finally, the connect. We read the precipitation data uh, with the reader data, and we provide the precipitation to the component that estimates the semivariogram, which is EV. Uh, EV also requires the station, and then if we provide us output, the distances and the semivariogram. 60 and is uh, 60 minutes? One 60 hour? is the uh, time step of your simulation, of your data, in minutes. minutes yeah, one hour. Do you have a question? The number eight. Is the cutoff divide? Is the distance up to which you compute the the semivariogram, so ah. in practice you can uh, you can imagine that your output, so it specifies the number of bins in which you want your uh, uh, experimental value. No? So in, a, in this case we will have 8 points because we provide them. If you want 12, uh, it provides you uh, 12 points instead of 8. So are the is the number of uh, points, semivariogram distances, 
can learn how to fixate. It's a bit hard because uh, uh, you want to have many points uh, so that your uh, semi uh, uh, theoretical semi has many points to be calibrated with. But then if you choose many points, uh, your uh, experimental variogram becomes very unstable. So uh, you can have, if this is for eight, if you do for um, 12, for example, you can have something like this. So very unstable. So the zero means that there are no stations for that class that you specify. So you have, um, yeah, you have to be, you have to analyze the data first, look at them, and try to find a good compromise between the number of points in which you specify your semi and the distances, and the stability of those points. Because remember that through this point, we have to fit our theoretical value. So we want a, func we want a function that pass through this point, and if it is very unstable, then I don't know how, how much it makes sense. Is there any method to uh, find this optimum number, or it is based on try and error? It's the, it really depends on your data, on how many stations you have. So if you have many data, many stations, you reduce the possibility, you reduce the instability because you have more possibility to find stations at that distances, and so you can increase your cutoff. But if you have few stations, and, uh, and also depends on your uh, uh, Precipitation value, for example, in this case. So not only on the number of the station, but also on the uh, value if they are uh, similar or dissimilar uh, between each other. Uh, another things, the last things I want to say that uh, uh, yes, th there is no uh, precise way, precise way to do that. That's why, for example, you don't compute. Uh, a theoretical value for each time step because you you can be very uh, uncertain with that but you do uh, an average uh, value of same distance uh, an, an average value of distance and semi variogram and then you fit this so now we will uh, visualize uh, first of all the input data which are the temperature, the, the precipitation file that we already opened, and we plot them. Uh, and then we visualize the result of the experimental uh, value. So just what kind of file it produces. Is it possible to connect two input values to different models? In, in which sense? OK. So you have to specify three times 60 minutes. Ah, yes. Does it make any sense that you have 60 minutes time series, but you just compute the semi variogram every three hours, maybe? Or no? Mm, it, so it could you connect that 60 minutes on top with the other two? Uh, I don't think so. You know why? Because uh, every, everything depends on the while loop here. OK. So this while loop is uh, as the same time series, as the same time step of your input data, which are the precipitation, which is hourly. Yeah. And then, but then, uh, a posteriori, you can uh, uh, subset the semi variogram. So the idea here is that we compute it for each time step, and then with the notebook, you can compute just an average value across all the time period. Or if you want, for the temperature, you will compute for each season, for example, or you can do for each month. So it's more or less like this. And then you fit, and then later we will see how to fit a uh, theoretical one. So uh, what Nicolò is going to do now is to show you uh, the input data and to <coughs> visualize the input data and run the first distribution. Mm. Run the, the experimental uh, yeah, ah, yes, okay. See, uh, when if do you want to make a break after this or it's fine? 
Yeah, we do a break now, <laughs> just because the... <laughs>